you just move out of the way, man. You're blocking the aquarium. Guys, in today's video, we're checking out this beautiful room divider aquarium that kind of looks like it's built into the wall, especially from the other side. It looks really good. And you're just gonna tell us all about it. If you don't know Yuris, this guy is like a professional full-time aquascaper who is taking care of really high-end clients. We actually did a video together yesterday as well, showing a bunch of them. Yeah, a day in life. A day in the life. But this is going to be a full dedicated video just about this tank. Yeah, so this is probably one of the best looking tanks of right now that I have in my, I don't know, service portfolio, uh, service portfolio <laughs> you could say. Uh, where do we start? The size? What do you want to know? Well, you have to do your maintenance, so it's up yeah, to you. Yeah, so I won't just start. You poke me with your questions. Let's do that. I'm going to grab the camera. So, here we have it. So the first question that we always ask, how big is the tank? Uh, I don't know, honestly. Uh, but, you know, I just, <laughs> if I would have to estimate, you have those, uh, you know, like door compartments, 40 centimeters each. So I would say we're around about 160 centimeters in length. We have definitely, I know that for sure, 45 centimeters front to back and it is uh, 60 centimeters tall. Okay, is so it? what is that, like 300 liters maybe? Uh, it's not close to 400. Close to 400. Yeah, yeah 400 liters approximately. Um, and uh, we have two Skylight Hyperspot LEDs built in here. It's actually a shame, uh, you don't see them, but you know. What else? Hardware wise, we have some. Uh, ventilations up here to extract the humid air out of the cabinet so we don't have any uh, issues with the moisture. Nice, looks like uh, computer fans. Uh, they are actually, yeah. cool. but USB powered and fun fact, uh, they've been a little bit too loud uh, so I used a little thingy in between for LED control. Like a little dimmer? Yeah, with the Remo, so I dimmed them down to 25% intensity. Oh, that's cool. Because otherwise they're too loud, so yeah. A uh, little cabinet modding here. Uh, we have a smart fish feeder there, you know, app controlled. Uh, so you can, you know, monitor how much food is remaining, feed the fish remotely if needed, uh, and do like a custom week schedule. You know, feed on Monday, don't feed on Tuesday because I come here on Tuesday, I feed them myself, stuff like that. Mm. Uh, super convenient. Do you feed them a different food when you come uh, here? Yes, so we have the. Um, uh, Arca Bio Grain, uh, this new organic uh, dry food from Arca is really good, the fish loving it, feeding it on all of my customer tanks. And when I'm coming here, I'm feeding them some frozen food, I think yeah. Cyclops for the color. There's a lot of uh, carotene in Cyclops and uh, I help the fish, they show off some nice colors. Uh, down here, probably are curious what is under the hood. Definitely. Or below. So let's open all compartments. Uh, so the whole system, because of the size, is powered by two uh, canister filters. We have uh, here some OAS Biomasters. 600? Uh, one is 6, one is 850. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, so one is slightly bigger. Uh, the bigger one has a heater built in. Both have a heater built in, but one heater is enough, so one is just like a backup. Uh, this is the tubing for the water change and as you can see behind the filter there is a you know like a wash machine tap built into the wall mm -hmm. so we have fresh water that goes to the ro unit and this is for the dirty water that goes straight into the sink the two middle compartments uh, on one side we have the arca my aqua 1900 uh, which basically you know filters the tap water uh, which then goes into the aquarium and uh, the process is automated uh, with a timer and a water sensor. So, so you, you don't. Um, I'm not here. You don't, you don't have a you don't have a reservoir. No, I don't have a reservoir. It just fills up automatically and stops at the right time. Okay. Uh, and on this side we have the CO2, uh, slightly flimsy Epson Aqua regulator. You see, kind of wobbling, uh, but you know, it, it, does the job. it does the job. Yeah. Time to get started with your maintenance session. Yeah, so while I do the maintenance, Mark, you can uh, poke me some questions about the layout, the fish, the plants, the hardscape, whatever you want to know. Yeah. So the tank is maintained on a weekly basis. And uh, 
Ideally, this is how you want a tank to look like all the time. Uh, you don't even let it get to look dirty uh, because when it's already dirty, then it's kind of already too late. So for, the, for these type of clients, you prefer to do like weekly, just very short maintenance sessions to kind of yeah. make sure the tank always looks... Always top. Yeah, uh, exactly. Top. Uh, the reason is, if you do the intervals, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you know, something like that, especially in planted tanks, uh, things can get out of control quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, by monitoring it on a weekly basis, you just, you know, have always an eye on things and, uh, you know, they never get out of control. Ideally, you know, and if something's happening, you can react quickly and early. Okay. So, All right, man, so tell me, how long has this tank been up and running for? So this tank has been running for two years, but it has been rescaped uh, half time. Okay. Uh, you, you, know. you mentioned you had some issues, right? Yeah, I had some issues. I don't know what was wrong when I did it for the first time. Uh, difficult to tell, but I couldn't fix it. So I decided to pull the plug and just redo it, you know. Yeah. Same layout, same hardscape, uh, disinfected everything, fresh substrate, fresh plants. Actually, uh, I improved my initial plant choice because the first one I wasn't happy with. Also, this side of the composition I wasn't 100% happy with. So, you know, it was like a second trial. Yeah. And uh, I really love the plants that you've chosen in here, man. Yeah. So, just for people to, uh, yeah, let's just quickly go over them. So, we have a carpet with dwarf hairgrass. And then, in between the dwarf hairgrass, there's some. Helanthium tendlin, but it's super, super tiny. I absolutely love it. And then on the rocks, we have Hygrophila pinatifida, which is again, super compact. Well, it's actually not as compact as you guys would like, but I absolutely love it. Yeah, the trimming is overdue. And then these really big bushes of Blixa japonica. I think, to be honest with you guys, Blixa japonica and Hygrophila pinatifida is, well, they're definitely high in my, my favorite plant list. So these rocks are quite special as well, right? Yeah, they're called wild rhino stones. Uh, I guess because, uh, you know, they have this elongated round shape, many of them, and they look like the, how to say, the rhino. Yeah, the type, horn. The horn, yeah. yeah. Right, so in this tank, you're just cleaning the glass with a, a regular sponge. Where is your fancy algae scraper that we saw earlier? So I'm using a sponge whenever possible uh, because it just gives me the best control. Uh, least risk of you know making scratches especially if you don't have cosmetic scent the soil is just soft uh, i'm not getting too close to the soil with a sponge for that i have a, uh, a blade scraper mm -hmm. and uh, yeah you know by doing it with your hand you just feel if the glass is clean and uh, it just it's just the quickest way yeah. to clean also it is most gentle to your uh, to the corner to the silicone seal yeah. because whatever you know, tool you are using, you're gonna bump into the silicone, and you know, over time, I've been maintaining some tanks for like 10 years, uh, some customer aquariums, uh, and the silicone in the corners, you know, it can get damaged little by little over time. And with a sponge, uh, you create the least amount of damage. Uh, a little pro tip here if you have a lot of aquariums at home, uh, welcome to the uh, Multiple Tank Syndrome Club, MTS. Have a single sponge for every single tank. This way, your algae and whatnot from one tank stays in the tank. It's not travels across to all tanks. And if you have an outbreak, you know, you're kind of limiting to one tank and not to all the tanks. I've definitely, I have definitely made the mistake in the past. Yeah. And wash your hands in between. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so how big of a water change are we doing actually? Uh, we're doing a 50% water change. So this uh, outflow, no, inflow pipe, uh, it's cut to measure, mm -hmm. so as soon as we reach 50%, it's gonna start sucking in air. So it's gonna stop here, yeah? Yeah, gonna stop automatically. And then you turn on the RO system. Exactly. And then actually you just leave. You don't wait for it to be filled up completely. No, I don't have to, it's automated. And uh, what we can do now is trim the panel to feed a little bit and speak about... We have time, we have to wait anyway. Mm -hmm. I have. The most professional scissors over here, guys. Check that out. Are these ADA? <laughs> these are Kornii. <laughs> I don't know. I just found them in the kitchen. Uh, one day, I wanted to trim the panini feeder. I haven't had my fancy tools with me. Uh, so I just went into the kitchen, asked the client, hey, do you have you know, some kind of scissors? And the client said, 
is this going to serve the purpose? I was like, yeah, better than, better than nothing. And ever since, I'm trimming this tank with these scissors. Yeah, why not? Gets the job done. So how are we doing this? So how are we doing this? Uh, basically, you know, uh, I'm looking for these vertical shoots, you know, one like this. Yeah. Just go as deep as I can and just cut it. You know, down here is another one. Everything that grows vertically is removed. So with pinot tefillah, usually the ones that grow vertical, they will grow bigger, right? Exactly. And by trimming off the verticals, you know, taking away the power from the plant, and this is maintaining a small leaf size, and is developing those side shoots that you're looking for, that are going to give you, you know, uh, this compact look. Uh, if the interval would be bigger, or I would skip the trimming part for a few weeks or months, uh, obviously the rocks would become overgrown and I would have to trim them harsh, like a hedge, and then, uh, you know, it will look a little bit naked. I and mean, I can do a little spot here, pretend I have to do it like this. Just look, guys, you know, everything that gets in the way over here is just chopped away. What stays is maybe one, two centimeters of, you know, those runners and reed soms close to the rock. And in a few weeks' time, it's gonna look nice again yeah but if you would do that on the entire tank yeah it's gonna be ugly for a couple of weeks yeah and the, the client will not be happy yeah so this is the the premium service of doing it more frequently but you know i was efficient or i am efficient with the setup here yeah no, it clean. Doesn't, doesn't have to take long i have time anyway you know yeah. oh you see here oh, right. water change almost done So we actually haven't talked about the fish just yet. So we have a group of the dwarf neon rainbows. I see amber tetras. And I see, are these called pearl gouramis? What's the, yeah, the yeah, English yeah. name? Yeah, exactly. Pearl gouramis. And then there's a little, a little cleanup crew with some amano shrimp. I see some cherry shrimp as well. And we saw the one, uh, Tiny crayfish. CPO. CPO. Really cute. Okay, man. So water change. Well, we, we've taken out the old water. Yeah. Trimmed the plants. Exactly. Net, you netted out the trimmings. What's next? So next, uh, I'm gonna initiate the refill with the rosemosis water. I'm gonna turn the filters back on. I'm gonna remineralize the water like in advance because you know our water has no minerals. So I'm gonna put the minerals into the tank. It's gonna get a little bit cloudy, you know, after 10 minutes, it's all crystal clear again. Uh, add some fertilizer. Uh, in case you guys are wondering what I'm using here on the system, we have the APT Sky uh, RO powder. It is by far the best product I ever used. And this tank currently uh, is getting the APT Zero. You can easily calculate uh, the appropriate dosage on the website. Uh, super easy, just type in size of your tank, gonna tell you how much you need of both, very convenient. So you add the fertilizer just on a, on a weekly? Exactly, I do the weekly dosing, yeah, okay. all, in, all in one go. And after that we're done, we can, we can go, right? Yeah. Okay, maintenance session is done. Tank is still filling up, but it's going to stop automatically, right? Yeah, it's going to stop automatically. So the RO unit is on a timer. The time has been calculated and tested many times. Like I said, the system is running for two years now. Uh, so the timer is going to stop the refill. Just in case something goes wrong, there is a water sensor installed slightly above the water line, like a safety uh, measurement. So uh, in case something's with a timer, the water sensor is going to stop the water fill and yeah. Using it for many customers has proven to nice. work very good. Yeah. Come on. Thank you for taking us through this tank again, showing us uh, yeah how you how you do your stuff. Yeah. Can I ask you and your viewers a favor? Sure. Uh, so the aquarium now literally is looking at its best, at its peak. I've taken some kind of you know final shots of the aquarium, and I'm looking to add it to my portfolio. Mm -hmm. But I still don't have a name okay. for the aquarium. So let us know in the comments a good name for this yeah. tank. Thanks, man. Guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.